everybody, it's your friend and your guy, Gardner. It's been a minute since I've made one of these videos, mostly because every time I'd come up with an idea for a feature that I'd like to see on the Steam Deck, I'd write it down, only to have Valve push an update that made that feature a reality. Well, now I'm back with a list of features that Valve hasn't implemented yet. So here are 10 more features and fixes I'd like to see on the Steam Deck. Number 10, Steam Deck UI Workshop. Now, I've already mentioned this in a previous video, but Valve hasn't made it real yet, and I really want to see this. Look, I'm a fan of the Steam Deck plugin loader project that lets you install a variety of plugins on your quick access menu. They're all community made, and it's a pretty awesome tool, but it's also not perfect. For example, you have to use the touchscreen to access these features as currently the menus don't support controller input. This becomes a real problem when you're playing on an external monitor and uh, the orientation of the touchscreen reverts to its default state. And some people have suggested that it can make the Steam Deck UI a bit unstable, and I've seen that myself. That's why I'd like to see an official first party plugin system. If Valve could deliver a plugin system that's integrated with the Steam Workshop, then any enterprising individual would be able to make their own plugins, and that would be sick. It would be a killer app, I think. Number nine, more stability improvements. Now, the last two or three Steam Deck updates have introduced more instability into the Deck UI, and I found it quite obnoxious. As I just mentioned, this could be chalked up to the fact that I have the community main plugin manager installed, but I asked in my previous video about stability issues, and many people seem to be having them, not just me. I'd like to see special attention being paid to the stability of the UI, even with unsupported stuff like the Steam plugin manager installed. Number eight, official SteamOS ISOs. Now, I've had my Steam Deck since just before the launch day, and Valve has made improvement after improvement to the OS, but they keep insisting that the operating system on the Steam Deck is not SteamOS, it's the Steam Deck OS. There has been efforts made by the community to produce an installable ISO based on the Steam Deck OS, namely Hollow ISO. And while it's definitely cool to see the community coming together, I don't think there's anything that can actually beat an official SteamOS 3 release. Speaking of, if you want to see me install Hollow ISO on my GPD Win 2, get subscribed. We're going to be tackling Hollow ISO installation in a future video. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, and I think with your help, we can do it. And thanks. Number seven, use as a controller on another machine. Now, one of my favorite things about the Steam Deck is that it's such a comfortable and well-designed input device. And besides the standard dual thumbsticks, face buttons, D-pad, and triggers, it also has two trackpads, a gyroscope, touchscreen, and four rear pro buttons. Imagine if the Steam Deck were able to natively stream its inputs to any arbitrary machine. You could do it over USB or even over Wi-Fi. You'd be able to play all kinds of titles on your desktop PC using the Steam Deck as a controller, and it would open up a world of emulation too. Authentic Wii U emulation, anybody? Maybe even DS or 3DS emulation with proper dual screen support? And if Valve ever gets around to releasing a first party title that takes full advantage of the Steam Deck's unique inputs, then being able to play the title on your PC using the intended input hardware would be a major bonus. I'd love to be able to use my Steam Deck as an input device on my desktop PC. Just saying. Number six, ad hoc download play. Now, the Steam Deck is great for many things. Playing games with your friends is one of them. Valve recently added stellar remote play together support where two people or more using their own Steam Decks can play a local multiplayer game together over the internet. That's pretty awesome and it's really innovative, but it takes a very specific kind of game to be able to support that kind of gameplay and it requires an internet connection. But what if you're out on the road, say at a convention and you wanna meet up with fellow gamers who don't own a copy of the game you wanna play? Well, Nintendo solved this issue nearly 20 years ago with the DS. Download Play. An ad hoc wireless network is created by the host device, which would allow other DSs to join. The client devices would then download all the files necessary to play a single level from the host device, and they'd be able to play it together. This is entirely possible on the Steam Deck, but it would require Valve to create an API for games to hook into to make this a possibility. I think it would be a worthwhile feature for them to add though, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one in particular. Number five, stream to YouTube, Twitch, and Steam. Speaking of remote play together, we know that the Steam Deck has the hardware needed to capture and stream gameplay footage in real time. 
So why not expand this ability? I want to be able to live stream directly from the quick access menu to YouTube or Twitch or other platforms. Steam has their own in-house streaming platform for God's sakes. Now I tried setting up OBS to work in game mode, but I didn't have any luck with it. So I really think Valve should make this feature a first class citizen in the quick access menu. And while we're at it, they should make recording gameplay a possibility too. And that's number four on my list. A quick access menu item to screen capture or maybe a Steam plus options combo button to toggle it? Yes, please. Number three, external storage. Have you tried connecting USB storage to your Steam Deck? I have, and in the Deck UI, it doesn't do anything, even if you don't have an SD card connected. I'd really like game mode to be able to support and manage multiple external devices, not just a single SD card. Number two, file transfer via USB. Now I made a video a few months ago about how to mount your Steam Deck's file system on your desktop PC via SSH. And Liam over at Gaming on Linux recommended the Warpinator tool. But the fact of the matter is the most intuitive way to copy files between your PC and the deck doesn't actually work. People might think that you could just pop the SD card out of the deck, plug it into the SD card reader on your Windows PC and copy files to it, but that won't work seeing as Windows can't read Linux file systems. Exasperated by technical nuance such as these, one might assume that you could plug your Steam Deck directly into your PC using the provided USB port, and both the deck's internal storage and the SD card will show up in File Explorer. But again, that's not the case. The Steam Deck doesn't offer that kind of file transfer, but there's no reason that it couldn't support that via a system update. I would love it if Valve could support either media transfer protocol or mounting of the Steam Deck's SD card and internal file system on a host machine via USB, that would be fantastic. Number one, first party game. And specifically, I'm talking about a game that takes advantage of the Steam Deck's unique input methods, trackpads, motion, touchscreens, paddle buttons, etc. I know Aperture Desk Job was cool and all, but it was a tech demo with some portal humor in it. It was also a huge frickin' tease. I want a brand new portal. Heck, I would even take a game built in the Portal 2 engine. Just give us cool mechanics to use with the touchpad and the gyro. Push the industry forward, Valve. But I'd like to know what you think. What fixes or features would you like to see on the Steam Deck? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to Marcus Batson, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of folks like Marcus that I've been able to grow the show into what it is today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, consider using the links below to pledge your monthly support and become a Linux warrior. And thanks. I think that's going to do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and I'll see you guys next time.